Okay, we're given a rational function, f of x is 2 over x plus 5. Our goal here is to find the average rate of change um, over this given interval. Now, one mistake sometimes we make is this is an interval where these are both x values. From an x value of 7 to an x value of 7 plus h, which looks a little bit strange at first, but let's get jumping right into this. So when we think about average rate of change, average rate of change can mean the same thing as the slope. And calculating slopes, usually the easiest way to do this, I think, is using the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. There are a lot of different ways we can write this, such as using function notation, but I like going back to the basics. All right, so we have some x values from our interval. We have a function. Let's put these together and get y values that go with them. So first, I'm going to plug in Evaluate our function at 7, so that's going to be 2 over um, 7 plus 5, or 2 over 12. That corresponds with the ordered pair 7, comma, 2 twelfths. All right, we could make that 1 6 if we would like to. The next one is we have that other x value, which looks strange, but that's okay. Let's go with 7 plus h, gets evaluated into the function. We're going to get 2 over 7 plus h plus 5, which is going to work out to be 2 over 12 plus h, or h plus 12. All right, from here, let's go ahead and make that into an ordered pair. So we input 7 plus h into the function as our x value, and we output 2 over 12 plus h. All right, now we have an x1 value and a y1 value, an x2 value, and a y2 value. So from here, let's go ahead and try to find that average rate of change by using the slope formula. So I'm going to go with 2 over 12 plus h, that y value minus 2 over 12, divided by 7 plus h minus 7. Now the denominator here of the big fraction will simplify down pretty smoothly here that we can combine our like terms. Positive 7 minus 7 is going to result in an h in the denominator. But we do run into a little bit of a problem in our numerator that we have two fractions being subtracted. To simplify this down, I believe what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get a common denominator. So on the first one, and instead of that 2 twelfths, I'm going to go ahead and replace that with 1 sixth. Alright, to get that common denominator, we're going to need both a copy of 6 and a copy of 12 plus h. Now that we have that in mind as far as a goal, what I would like to do is go ahead and I'm going to multiply the first fraction. We're missing the 6 from the, in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 6 over 6, which will give us 12 in our new numerator. And I'm going to multiply that second fraction by 12 plus h. So we end up with 12 plus h times 1 gives us 12 plus h in the numerator, and 6 times 12 plus h in the denominator gives us that common denominator. Alright, from here, let's go ahead and bring along our h, and let's combine these numerators together over that common denominator. So 6 times 12 plus h, our common denominator, we're going to take the first numerator minus the second numerator. Now I did keep that set of parentheses around the entire second numerator, and the reason why is because of the subtraction that was in between the two fractions. Because we had two terms in that second numerator, I want to think about that as that negative needs to be distributed to each one of them. Okay, from here, further reducing down, what we can do is say, well, 12 minus 12 plus h, sorry, minus h, I didn't distribute when I said I was supposed to distribute, all over 6 times 12 plus h. And we still have this h in the, the big denominator. Almost there, bring that h along, bring the 6 and 12 plus h along. But let's go ahead and combine, we have positive 12 minus 12 makes 0, and we still have negative h up in that very top numerator. All right, the last thing we're going to do in this case is go ahead and simplify down. We don't want to leave this as a fraction within a fraction. 
All right, so to simplify down, what I'm going to do is visualize that h in the big denominator is h over 1, and I want to multiply to make a 1 in our denominator of the big fraction. So I'm thinking to myself, h times 1 over h is going to make a 1 down there, but if I multiply the denominator by 1 over h, I have to multiply the numerator by 1 over h also. Multiplying by h and dividing by h, which is essentially what we're doing, gives us a 1 in the big denominator. And this will give us negative h over 6 times 12 plus h times 1 over h. Um, that process that I did by multiplying by 1 over h over 1 over h, um, sometimes students think of this as keep change flip, if that helps out as you're doing this. All right, multiplying by h in the numerator and h in the denominator will get to cancel each other out. So our final answer here is going to be negative 1 over 6 times 12, 12 plus h. All right, we could distribute that 6 in the denominator, but that's a pretty good final answer. Negative 1 divided by 6 multiplied by the quantity 12 plus h. All right, hope this helps out. It's okay that it still has an h in the denominator. I uh, wouldn't finish up. Good luck as you're working through these problems.